Spinning order of the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors, July 23, 2019. Roll call, please. Leyland? Here. Schwartz? Here. Schalke? White? Little? Here. Uh, would you please join us in a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Item one is agenda received as proposed or amended. We do have 14 A and B. A and B that we won't be taking any action on those right. two items today. Well, I'll move to approve the agenda striking of 14 A and B. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item two is public comments. Anybody like to speak to the board this time? It is not a agenda item. Please come up to the podium. Give us your name and address for the record, please. Norman Primer, 5832 2nd Street, Dewar, Iowa. And I'd like to make a comment on the odor from the grain elevator where they had all that rotten corn. They moved the rotten corn out, but the smell is just horrendous, and it's not healthy on the people that's sitting there in the area. So maybe they could check into that. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, is there anybody else? Okay, moving on to item three, uh, claims and payments, resolution A. The claims are a total of $1,231,910.64. Uh, that includes a number of substantial payments. Uh, the uh, Monthly services for NAF care at the jail of $104,321. Uh, there is a, a crane purchased by Secondary Roads for $375,000. And uh, the RACOM radio maintenance for fiscal 20, $233,345. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Any questions or comments for the resolution? Roll call, please. Leyland? Yes. Short? Yes. Little? Yes. Do we have anything under country view? No. Okay. Moving on to item four, we have a presentation. This is an update on recent legislative sessions related to property taxes, mental health, elections presented by the Iowa State Association of Counties. Good morning. For the public, why don't you state your name again? Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Jamie Cashman. With the, I'm the Government Relations Manager with the Iowa State Association of Counties. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, I uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity uh, to come before you today uh, to talk about things uh, that happened this previous legislative session and to seek input and talk about things uh, moving into the 2020 uh, legislative session. Uh, we certainly uh, work closely uh, with uh, the Urban County Coalition. Uh, and things uh, that have come before the General Assembly. Uh, but also, too, you know, from ISAC, we represent you. And then also, too, uh, we're contracted by the Iowa State As Association of County Supervisors uh, to work on your behalf. So I know you're very well aware of some of the things that are, have already happened uh, from the session. Uh, certainly, mental health and disability services, again, was a priority. Uh, we were very pleased that we made some progress and uh, adjusting those carry forward balance restrictions uh, to 40 percent and then also extending uh, to when uh, that would be implemented uh, to fiscal year uh, 2024. Uh, we were uh, disappointed though that nothing was done in terms of addressing the mental health levy. Uh, while we saw uh, legislation uh, that we certainly support uh, services uh, for children, uh, but the state needs to give us and the legislature needs to give us the resources uh, to provide those services and unfortunately uh, they did not make uh, any adjustments to that levy. 
So obviously, uh, this will be a priority uh, moving forward. So if the uh, state wants us to provide like they did, or they asked us to provide those services uh, a couple years ago in terms of complex needs uh, services in many of the counties, and certainly your mental health region is moving forward in terms of the access centers and so forth, uh, to have a, a long-term a sustainable a funding solution to provide those services uh, is needed um, more than ever. Uh, next was on uh, the IWIL, Iowa Water and Land Legacy. Uh, unfortunately, nothing was done uh, to address this. Uh, certainly, uh, this is extremely important, uh, especially uh, because of your county and how you've embraced uh, just the outdoor recreational needs and trails uh, all and up the, the Cedar Valley. And so if we could finally, uh, you know, certainly raise uh, the sales tax, uh, some have talked to raise it all the way up to a penny and provide some other services as a result of that, that would be great. But we first and foremost need to uh, fund uh, the trust fund and that first three eights would go towards that. The other thing too, and I know you guys have been a great uh, benefit of, is because of REAP, and that would fully fund REAP at, at $20 million. And last of, of ISAC's priorities so from this previous session uh, was on, uh, on taxes, and obviously uh, funding the backfill uh, was certainly uh, something uh, that we were very pleased the governor put it in our budget and the legislature followed through on their uh, commitment uh, to, to do so. So obviously uh, this has been threatened in the last uh, previous years and so we certainly uh, need to be vigilant and talking to our legislators about how important this is and how important it is to our, our counties and our, our communities to make sure they, they keep their promise. Every session that goes by we have new legislators that uh, weren't around when they actually passed that com commercial industrial property tax uh, bill and so obviously there's an education effort that needs to uh, be maintained. And so uh, now, well the other uh, thing, major piece of legislation that came up that I know you're well aware of is the, the property tax uh, a transparency bill or whatever you want to call it. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, obviously there'll be some changes in terms of if you want to go above, you know, 102 percent, you'll need a, a two-thirds vote. Obviously, in your case, you'll need four votes uh, to do that moving forward. It extends, you know, the filing of the budgets from M March 15th of that deadline to March 30th. So I think it's just more of a case of, you know, an, requiring an extra public hearing and, and doing that. I know you guys do that. You're very you know, open and transparent. So this is just another thing that the legislature is requiring on it. I'll just let you know, as a result of that legislation, on October 2nd uh, in Ames, we will be hosting a budget and a property tax seminar to talk about, you know, best practices and some of the things that are going on. It's at the Gateway Conference Center uh, in Ames, Iowa. Uh, we'll be having some panel discussions. There'll be some supervisors and county auditors and, and some other folks, experts, that'll be there to talk about this uh, going into the next budget year. Uh, so with that, I'll just open it up to any questions that you might have. Okay, board, anything from the board first? Chris? I mean, this uh, legislative session was certainly uh, a mess as the past number of, as they all have been since I've been serving, and so I, I just want to say I really appreciate the work that, that ISAC does on our behalf, and um, we'd really be lost without your voice and without the Urban County Coalition, so. Well, thank you, Supervisor. Yeah, because a lot of that information comes at us very fast, comes at you very quickly, too, so appreciate when you disseminate that to us as quickly as you do, so thank you. Thank you as well. What are you thinking or seeing, I guess, for next year? You mentioned, obviously, we'd be looking for the levy, the mental health, our mm -hmm. funding for the mental health needs, but are there other things that you maybe think or are seeing that I think what, you know, if we've traveled throughout the state as a result of the flooding and severe weather that we've had, obviously additional resources for our county roads uh, is certainly uh, going to be important. So that as we've traveled, that, that's going to be certainly one thing. Obviously, I will again since they haven't done that. I really think, you know, knock on wood, uh, that they'll try to get done early this year because it's an election year. I think, if anything, you know, if they'll look at, pro I doubt they'll look at property taxes again. Uh, you know that they, uh, obviously they'll say they addressed it. You know with the bill that they passed uh, this past year. I think if anything, there might be some things in terms of income um, income tax uh, changes that that they, they might look at. You know going into the election year. Uh, but other than that, I think they're hopefully trying to get done early this year. I know a hot topic amongst counties across the country is 
is criminal justice reform. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if you're sensing uh, any appetite in this current legislature to um, tackle something meaningful that would have a big impact both on, on local budgets but also um, in terms of outcomes from our criminal justice system. Yeah. I know there's been some things uh, that the Chief Justice has put forward in terms of some of these other courts, uh, you know, the vets courts and some of these other family courts to kind of uh, cut back on in terms of providing some different reforms. I'm sure there's some things that he's going to be putting forward again this year. I know there's been an appetite before that they had put some things forward that for some reason didn't make it through. Uh, ultimately pass the second funnel and so forth. So, yeah, I think there'll be some things that'll come up again this year. Okay. Jamie, you mentioned to billing diligent regarding the rebate for the commercial industrial mm -hmm. tax. I, I assume we're going to have to do that forever I mean, until they yank it from us. But Amen. Okay. So yep. I just let that remains on for yeah. Okay. No, the biggest thing is if they're ultimately going to do that, uh, we want to be at, certainly be at the table, and if they do do it, spread it out as long as possible to you know, lessen the impact on, on local government. Sure, because that's a million dollars to us always. It's so huge. We consider every time budget comes up. So. Oh, big time. Thank you. Rita, uh, do you have anything for your office? Oh, um, the legislative group is going to meet at 10 o'clock on the conference call today. Okay. On issues that the treasurers have. Um, but um, there's kind of different issues of what you've spoken about today. Okay. So we'll see what we're going to move forward with ISAC at that point. Very good. Sheriff, did you have anything? We met last week, and we will engage Jamie uh, every week before our session. <laughs> <laughs> we work very closely with ISAC. So. Very good. Thank you. Um, Mike? Um, conservation, got anything you want to? Just obviously, uh, high world is so important to us, and uh, as is all across the state. And uh, as we get ready for the fall conference here, uh, the CCDA has been discussing, you know, what, what we're looking at as far as uh, addressing uh, towards the legislature this year. But but I will at the top of the list. I mean, you know, the sunset's coming on reef, and um, that's going to be a that's a dagger to us if if, if there's nothing to replace that. And so uh, we'll push hard again. We we develop new strategy each and every year, and we're working on it again. So we'll be discussing that in August. So, very good. Kathy, the engineer. Uh, yeah, we're of course concerned about the last two legislative sessions with the increase and in, um, specialty loads being allowed on bridges. Uh, 2018 with the construction vehicles. Most recent session was the raw forestry products being allowed on. Oh, we understand that's a huge issue, and we'll continue to fight that. Mm -hmm. uh, Deb, anything? HR, uh, Kim, IT. Is there anybody else getting any questions for him? I have one, and I wonder uh, uh, if there's been any discussion amongst the counties uh, for municipalities that decide to use traffic cameras within a county. Is there any discussion amongst the counties to regulate and tax the usage of? Uh, there really hasn't. I know that there has been, you know, it seems like that uh, Polk County has been one that they've, they've looked at it, but I haven't heard of anything, you know, of other counties looking at it as well. Because I'm, uh, they're utilized here in Blackhawk County. It might be a, a source revenue stream, and I'll use that word mm -hmm. for the county. Yep. Well, certainly, uh, you know, uh, as we talked about with the backfill, uh, obviously, if if they're looking at doing that, obviously, we'll be looking at additional revenue streams to offset that, that loss. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there anybody else got any questions? I understand you're going to take a tour later yes. on today. Yeah, and then uh, if there are no more questions, I'll turn it to our executive director, Bill Peterson, for some very other good. things. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, so just for the record, uh, Bill Peterson, executive director of the association. Um, so on the traffic cams, um, and those are uh, regulated probably under the city's, uh, they would claim that uh, as a home rule authority for their actions. So uh, I, I don't suppose there would be any prohibition from counties putting them on county roads in some specific spots. but. Uh, I don't think the cities would like us encroaching on their um, home rule authority. Um, and uh, just sort of to uh, maybe I want to address this issue of 
local control and home rule authority. So um, one of the things that, that we have been talking about is uh, changing the terminology to make it, I think, clear to the citizens within our communities. And so instead of talking about local control or home rule authority, which uh, maybe the average citizen wouldn't uh, understand the implications of that, uh, we're talk I think what we want to change the dialogue is talking about state interference with local decision making. Uh, because in uh, many cases, that's what's happening is that you're seeing issues like the road issues and other things where there typically have been local decisions made to meet the uh, a situation that exists within your communities and within your county. Uh, the state is uh, finding it very convenient to step in to those uh, areas and try and get control of those decisions at the state level. And so uh, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say that it is uh, state legislators sitting up there thinking about this, but there are uh, interest groups out there that have uh, a desire to limit the decision making of local governments because it's a lot easier to go in and get a policy statewide that they have to deal with than having to deal with all of you 99 counties or 950 municipalities. Uh, so I, I think uh, using the right language to talk about those things to help citizens make sure that uh, it is really their uh, authority that's being encroached upon uh, and their authority of to have you as your local decision makers make decisions on their behalf. Uh, it's heading us, in, I think, in the wrong direction in the state. Um, so I just wanted to thank you, uh, first of all, for being a member of the Association of Counties. Uh, thank you very much for sharing Grant Veter with us, has been serving on the ISAC Board of Directors uh, for many years, first as the auditor's representative, but now uh, he's uh, filling a uh, position uh, because of his role on the National Association of Counties Board, and I will say that uh, he's very well respected and uh, he brings a lot of benefit to our organization. So uh, thanks for sharing him uh, with us. Uh, for supervisors specifically, I did bring along some items that I wanted to call to your attention uh, regarding our annual conference. Uh, and that is the agenda for the County Supervisors Association. Um, and uh, I think one thing that I wanted to highlight was uh, on Friday morning, um, we will uh, be having a congressional discussion. Uh, so Congresswoman uh, Finkenauer and Congressman King, and we're still hoping for maybe a commitment from uh, maybe uh, Congresswoman Axney or maybe even Senator Grassley that they would agree to show up uh, to have a sort of a uh, informal discussion with our members about issues that uh, are important at the federal level and how uh, we can work more closely with those individuals to uh, sort of accomplish things at the federal level that benefit uh, the state of Iowa. Uh, the, the second uh, thing that we've been spent uh, quite a bit of time on in the last year is this uh, flyer on the the flood track, and this will be actually an educational session that will be a component of our annual conference. And the first day we have uh, generally uh, educational programming, but we've worked with the Iowa Flood Center uh, for the last year of trying to put together ideas on how we can uh, better inform our members about the resources that the Flood Center has available to uh, local governments to uh, manage these ever-increasing number of flooding events that we've had in the state, uh, but also uh, provide an opportunity for people to make contacts and hear about actions that have been taken by other local governments uh, in dealing with specific uh, flood-related issues. And, you know, certainly we keep seeing these, uh, what I call, uh, sort of uh, catastrophic rain events where you get uh, 9 to 15 inches of rain dumped in a specific uh, area of the state and 
you know, sometimes it's close to a river, sometimes it's not close to a river, but um, water seems to be uh, becoming more and more of a problem here of, of us in the state. And uh, I think the Iowa Flood Center has some resources that supervisors, and we're also hoping that uh, conservation and engineers, uh, possibly sheriffs, uh, planning and zoning would be interested in this information. So uh, no extra cost as part of, just part of our regular conference uh, event uh, coming up in August. And with that, I won't uh, take any more uh, of your time, but I'd be happy to answer any question about anything the association does, any of our policies, how we arrive at them. Uh, but okay. Lord, any questions? No, I think I, I like the new uh, terminology of interference uh, with local decisions. Um, you could also go with sabotage, meddling, or obstruction, but I like interference. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, words have meaning, and we uh, we want to get our point across, but uh, you know, not go too far. So uh, <laughs> we like to stay sort of in the middle of the road uh, organizationally, since you know our members are of both political parties, uh, a, a broad spectrum of uh, of views. Uh, so we have to work hard to sort of bring everybody together to get consensus to get things done. So. Uh, we don't want to be too radical. But, uh, I doubt they'll like state interference too well either way. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry, but uh, you got to. It is. It is what it is, and um, you know we've seen just over the years uh, just a number of issues where uh, the state has stepped in and and made decisions that things should be done a specific way. Where uh, in actuality. Um, uh, there's a lot of variations in this state uh, from northwest to southeast and northeast to southwest and uh, changing political views, changing uh, community standards. And there is no specifically one right answer for any one of those except the right answer for the community the, of the people that live in that community. So. Uh, I think that's what our interest in is preserving that right for people to make decisions on things that are important to their community, but uh, may not have national implications or even statewide implications. So, well, again, uh, we want to reiterate. I guess appreciate your yes. services to us as a county. So, is there anybody much. else? Got any questions? Okay, we thank you very much. Okay, You're sure. Thanks welcome. a lot. Thank, thank you, you Jamie. Okay. Moving on to item five on the agenda is to receive project updates from department heads and or elected officials. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. Could I please have the TVs on? I wanted to uh, highlight a recent um, example of, of uh, the changeable message boards that we purchased last year. Uh, I think this is a good success story for those uh, message boards. Uh, earlier this spring, we had, I believe some of you had received some some complaints about an event that was going out on Cedar Wapsie Road and Waverly Road. If you're familiar with that intersection, that's where the Iowa Trap Shooting Association, I believe that's where their headquarters, their main facility is. And in April, they either April or May, they hosted the high school state meet and uh, the traffic was parked up on both sides of Cedar Wapsie Road. Uh, pretty much from Waverly Road all the way to Ford Road. And it made for very hazardous conditions. People were entering and exiting their cars, walking across the road. And uh, one of the neighbors in particular, the Hesse's, they, I believe they called one of you at least and voiced their concern. And they offered to work with us on a solution. So we uh, worked with the Hesse's and also Power Pavers, which is a company on the, the northeast side of that intersection to find some art alternate parking areas. Uh, we we spoke with the sheriff, worked with closely with the sheriff, and we placed uh, the no parking signs uh, along Cedar Wapsie Road. And here's a photo of of uh, during the event. The, the signs are placed, and you can see that there are no cars parked along Cedar Wapsie Road. Uh, this is looking uh, westbound, so we're almost at the intersection of Cedar Wapsie and Waverly Road. You can see. Uh, still, there's no traffic parked along uh, the sides of the road. 
you can see on the uh, south side of the road there, that should say south side of the road, that's the Hesse property that they allowed us to have that overflow parking go into. We placed message board, a message board at the entrance to the driveway telling people that they should park in that field. And then here is the other message board placed in the power pavers property. Unfortunately, this side of the road didn't get much use. Um, we'll work with them, the power paver people or work with the Iowa Trap Shooting Association to find out if, if that's really needed, that other locations needed or, um, but I feel it's been, that was a pretty successful application of using those signs. Uh, we've worked very closely with the sheriff to get the signs out and about the county over the last three or four months. We're using them primarily for uh, pro event, so event uh, notifications as well as pedestrian safety, bicycle safety. Um, we are collecting speed data when the signs are active. They can collect data. And can I answer any questions about the signs? Well, Sheriff, this event's been going on for as long as I can remember. Has it always been a problem every year? I mean, 30 years ago they were out there holding these tournaments. So the problem is that uh, you can park or stand a vehicle for up to 24 hours as long as it's off that uh, that white fog line. And so there's no enforcement really. And yeah, it's a, it's a problem. Uh, we've never had an issue. Uh, in fact, we had an accident on Saturday that was not related to parking, which was, was related to stupid driving. But um, it, was, uh, it was very refreshing this year to see, and every shift of uh, deputy was uh, up there to make sure that these signs were effective. And uh, this year, we had far less concern and far less issue. But in the past, have they always parked on the side there? They have. Have they? Yeah, and it, it does. It narrows it down to damn near one, one lane. Because that's, that's usually a, a fairly large event. It's huge. Uh, they just had one recently, didn't yeah. they? They did, the, they did the state high school trap meet, and then this is their second largest yeah. event with the state uh, seniors trap meet. And, uh, yeah, those two events are definitely concerning for us. But uh, I think we found a rubric with uh, the way Kathy placed it and the, the agreements that she worked out with those two companies or two, uh, two locations for parking um, certainly made that congestion next to nothing. What, the event lasts what? Uh, it started on Tuesday and ran through Sunday. So it's about a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it was fantastic. And the fact that it's, I will say, covertly collecting data for us we're using that data. We're getting that from uh, uh, from the engineer's office every time it's placed. We get those downloads. We get those charts, those graphs, that data, and we're actually using that data too. We get traffic counts. We get speeds, median averages. We're getting all of that data too. And so uh, next, the the signs are being moved uh, for a Waterhawks event, and so we're going to pay attention to Gilbertville Road and and the the traffic counts and the data on that road as well. So the information that we're gathering is going to make us more effective and more uh, more efficient with with how we do traffic enforcement as well. So we're appreciative of that partnership too. Appreciate the safety yeah. improvements. No, it's though. working well yeah. for residents. That's Good. great. Yeah. I know I had when the supervisor they had received the complaint, and so I really appreciate the two of you working together and working with the Hesseys too. Yeah come up with this viable solution and it's just a I think the proof's in the pudding for this yeah. one the picture tells a thousand words you know with with what it actually looked like and every shift every day we were out there and, and drove by it and, and made sure that I think the trap shooting association will tell you the same thing I don't recall ever there. getting oh. I came in on Monday morning I said what the heck happened on Saturday and they said some guy just didn't stop at the stop sign and got ran into but uh but otherwise yeah we didn't have any incidents no issues no yeah. problems whatsoever well and it's good that residents bother contact us. I think sometimes yeah. they don't and haven't maybe previously. Well, Hesse's been, been out there a while if it's the one I know. Mm -hmm. But it sounded like there were several incidents, I think, just at this particular yeah. event that brought Kathy, yeah, I did have a question on the, uh, there's a call the Courier Sunday's paper on the Cedar Wapsie Bridge. Um, why isn't any work being done? They said the last time work was done was in March and they've used up 12 or 15 percent of their working days already. It's yeah, so I reported on that last week that they, PCI is our prime contractor on that project. Sure. They've used approximately 22 or 24 percent of the working days. There is work, the uh, trees had to be felled by April 1st, that's the deadline so that the bats do not roost in the trees. Those were all felled, they laid there for many weeks and, and uh, a subcontractor came back 
um, probably two or three weeks ago now, and they've been chipping and mulching. It's it's a lot. It's all cleaned up now. It's been mowed. We're ready for uh, actual bridge work to start. PCI, as you know, they're very busy on the Highway 63 through town here, as well as the Viking Road intersection project. So we don't have much leverage to get them to come and work on this project. They well, it's a big project for us. It it's is a big project. We, for we them. have liquidated damages. What uh, what's the completion date on that? It's 240 working days. 240. So we're we were estimating. Depends on what they get done in the winters, the coming winter. Okay. Next year, ne late next summer, perhaps. But but we are on top of it. We are reporting to the DOT. We just have very little leverage at this point to uh, entice them to come to this project. Okay. I'm sure they're watching as closely as we are. As yeah. Well. I'll say it's somebody else. I mean, the state's giving them a half million dollar bonus to finish Highway 63 early, so um, that's what we're up against. And we want that too. <laughs> okay, is there anybody else? Okay, moving on to item six minutes approved for July 16, 2019. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is a consent agenda that will be made with a single resolution. Move to approve. Second. Any questions on the consent? Roll call, please. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Little? Yes. Item eight, reports. This is an update from Ben Deligardale doing business as urban services in regards to Washburn Sanitary Sewer. Good morning. Good morning, board. Good morning. This is updating for June, Washburn 2019. We had a pretty routine month of monitoring lagoon cell levels and the flow to the lagoon. We did complete our equalization of the lagoon cells on June 12th. Completed the MOR, submitted that to the DNR, and that was for May 2019. Did a quarterly influence sample as required. We do that every three months. Just break it down. I usually do the, you know, around the last of the month because I do the, the effluent sampling during the spring and fall, so I try and kind of break those up. Air release valves, there are seven in town and two between the lagoon and the river that we flush and clean out, um, just basically so air can be released from the system if it were to, to get in there. So those have a lot of grit and solids inside those. We mow the lagoon uh, June 8th and 20th. We sprayed the banks and the fence line twice. Don't have the date on those, but they were about 10 days apart. i um, like to see how much green we can get rid of on the, the banks where we can't mow. So it also helps with rodents, um, keep rodents and wildlife out of there, property maintenance. We just like to keep everything mowed down. So um, we did a little bit of rodent control. There was fox burrowing for striped gopher on the west bank and the north bank um, on the lagoon. Just trying to keep those off the banks. We, if they're out in the field, we don't really mess with them. But um, if they're getting into the infrastructure of the banks, we try to protect that. We had six service calls in June. Uh, we had another, another month of high number of low case. We had 15, and I think about seven of those were from the utility that came through on Folk Road. Uh, between Laporte Road and Washburn Road, there's a power line coming through there. Uh, they called frequently for low case. There was multiple different uh, contractors that were responsible for that, so they have to call their own low case in. Uh, we located it probably three or four times during the month, but we do have to keep those fresh. They're down in a ditch that's not mowed, so um, using stakes and um, ribbon and all that good stuff, but uh, we just want to make sure that our utilities don't get hit. So one thing that uh, did happen here July 2nd is that uh, we were not getting a reading on our flow meter. So we entered the manhole and there was a compromised piece of the pipe where the flow meter's at. There's a flow meter that goes around the pipe and wires that come up into a module. That module sends the signal to the meter readout. So there was sewage inside that meter. I'm currently not getting a readout. Um, so I've contacted the supplier. They're talking to the manufacturer of this, the flow meter. Um, we're going to be getting that flow meter out of there for the end of this week. I was hoping to get a new flow meter in place so that I don't have to report zero flow for the entire month of July, which it's not really a huge deal. We would 
obviously you need to know what our flow is, but our remedy uh, is that the manufacturer wants to look at why this flow meter failed before they give us a new unit. So uh, I was hoping that they would be covered under warranty, but their warranty is one year and it's been in there for three years. So I'm trying to find the least expensive route, but it may cost us between $1,500 to $3,000 to get this one out replaced. But they want to give us a replacement that's going to work longe long longevity-wise for this application. I'm not sure if there's a reason that it failed, but uh, when they look at it, they'll give me the results and give us a direction to go. So in the meantime, I'm going to be reporting zero flow to the DNR. What was the cost? Around 1500 to 3000 I really have no idea. Um, by the time I get down in the manhole and get it to them and with their they're not going to charge me to test it, but they want to know what to give me in return. I don't know what that's going to cost exactly, sure. but uh, just a r very rough estimate of that. So um, that's basically all I have for now. You got any questions? Lord, any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item nine. This is contracts and agreements. This is a res resolution to correct the board's record. Uh, for an action item. Basically, we approved the contract, I believe, back in December of last year. I signed the contract, and we didn't have approval for that. So basically, that's what we're doing today. Is that correct, Kathy? That's correct. So, All right, move to two. approve. Second. Okay, any questions, Kathy, any more? No, it was just an oversight on yeah. my part that we didn't get it on the agenda. What I talked to you about the other day, I'll get back with you on that. Maybe we can combine them. Okay, then, roll call, please. Do we have a motion? Yes. Roll call, please. Trelka? Yes. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Little? Yes. <coughs> okay, moving on to item 10, other business. This is a motion that the request for purchase capital equipment submitted by Kim Veder, IT director, be approved. Dollar amount $12,913.84. Move to approve. Second. Kim, anything? I've seen a memo on this. Do you have anything else? No, it's a budgeted item. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carries. Item B is a motion to request for purchase capital equipment. Uh, this one's for $7,651.38. Move to approve. Anything on this, Kim? It's for the tax administration. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carries. Item C is a resolution of the tax sale certificate assignment for a vacant lot. It's got the parcel number listed there, located in Waterloo, pursuant to Iowa Code 446.31 in the Code of Iowa, uh, be approved and a certificate of purchase tax sale be assigned to the City of Waterloo. Rita sent a, a memo over pertaining to this, and I believe this one and the next one, and it's on um, some properties that where they're building those Hawkeye homes. Yes. So these are a couple lots in line there is all that is. Yes, uh, the um, parcel is, um, Mr. Zellifer has been working with Hawkeye Community College on this. And so it's just basically an assignment of that certificate from Blackhawk County to the city. And uh, there is um, a large amount of money uh, due on the taxes since 2005, but uh, a large percentage of it is special assessments. So the city has been maintaining this property for a length of time. So that's why uh, Mr. Zellifer has requested that uh, there would be no exchange of funds. I'm not asking for uh, abatement or compromise of the actual front funds because if there would be a redemption, that money would still be due to be paid. Sure. So. Move to approve. Second. City attorney got anything you want to add or pretty, pretty straightforward? Chairman. <laughs> I just want to ask Pete if he has any concern about me voting on this. Oh, no. no. I do not. We're not turning it over to you, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. I do have a motion. Second, let's get a roll call, please. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Okay. Yes. Little? Yes. And item D is a resolution that the compromise offered amount of zero. By the city of Waterloo on taxes and special assessments for the parcel listed there. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Schwartz? Yes. Jelka? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Okay, um, 
Everybody's welcome to stick around. We have a work session. Uh, it's update on restoring county secondary roads presented by Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. So, just to just rest real quick. Three minutes. <laughs> I think everybody's all the time in here. Oh, I know you Hey. Oh, you said you're great. Better work this one. I can't uh, give you too much work. <laughs> yeah, I understand. He told me. Yeah. Okay, so that's fine. I was encouraged them to do, do something. Yeah, we'll put a limit on this contract. You can, Numna. I should have it ready for you in the next couple of days. I worked on it yesterday. He's so used to that. that uh, uh, we'll have it ready for you. Thank you, Tori. Appreciate it. Yeah. The bit more drink. You later, Pete. Hmm. Well, maybe he's bidding on stuff or whatever. Maybe all the projects. I've been all the time. Yeah, yeah then he's getting all the Yeah. I was going to say, he was good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kathy Nicholas, uh, County Engineer. So I wanted to give you an update on uh, how we are restoring our roads this year. We've there was a lot of discussion earlier this year about the poor uh, conditions that the roads were in, particularly in the the spring and then the early summer. As you know, we do not have a finance director right now. Normally, we would be talking to this person and. Um, conferring with them about how best to proceed. We may be overrunning the budget that we just submitted. We we didn't anticipate a lot of some of this work that we are doing or would like to do, so I, I just want to keep you informed of that our costs may go up in what we're doing, how we're spending them, the money, the extra money. So currently the status of the gravel road system, we are much better off than we were in March and April, for example. However, as you know, as has been discussed earlier this morning, we are still having uh, rain events, more than what, what is considered normal. And we are still seeing soft spots, uh, frost boils, black patches of dirt coming up out of the gravel road system. We are, trying, we are repairing those as best we can. However, we do think that we are going to be going into the fall, into frost, possibly the winter with some of these still existing on the road system. And that's a first, right, Kathy? We've not had that in many years anyway to go into the winter with those spots? I would say this widespread, definitely. We, we may have had one or two spots in the past, but in general, we've been able to um, patch things up, cover areas with rock, but this year, it just hasn't been as effective due to all of the continuing rains. Thank you. So uh, what we've been doing about it on the gravel road system is, is placing spot rock like we normally do. That's where we, in some locations, we may go and core out, remove, excavate out a portion of that native material. We usually don't do that. In some of the worst spots, we, we're able to do that. Uh, we place rock. We call that spot rocking. Typically, we're doing that in the, the early spring, right after the frost is leaving the ground. As it's leaving the ground, we'll be placing the spot rock. Normally, that's done in um, April. Some years, we're able to start that work in March. Uh, this year, we were still doing it in early July. In fact, we're still doing it in some locations, still placing spot rock in soft areas. However, as you know, I've talked to you about this in the past. Our gravel road system is made of limestone and dolomites. Those, those rocks decompose after a certain number of years. Uh, traffic is traveling on these rocks. The climate affects the rocks. They just degrade over time. We need to be replacing that rock on a three to four year cycle to, to keep up with that degradation of the rock. And so, at, again, as you know, we have nine greater districts. They have approximately 
60 to 80 miles in each district, they have a certain number of miles they need to be replacing every year. 20 miles per year is ideal. 15 miles per year is what we would like to get accomplished this year. Um, excuse me. Um, we do normally replace 300 tons of rock per mile. That, that's our mile rock um, tonnage that we place. Some roads need mile rock every year. Grundy Road is one of those roads, and we've, I've discussed that with you. That's one of the largest reasons we, need, we would like to resurface it. Uh, we just completed placing mile rock on Grundy Road again. We've been doing this every year now for the last four years. We paid a contract hauler to haul that rock. We just finished it at a cost of about $40,000. Here's some photos that were taken approximately three weeks ago, and you can see that we still have, the day after it was placed, it still looks like there's no rock in some places. There's just, that's our heaviest uh, volume of traffic in the county on the gravel road system. And it's definitely showing it. Um, so as I've said, we're, we will probably, we are not able to place 15 miles of mile rock ourselves. We just don't have enough time left in the season before winter hits us. We are proposing to hire contract rock haulers. We contract with basic materials. They find the truck drivers for us. Wayne's given them a list of roads that we want re-rocked. We're proposing to have them do four districts and our own crews would do the remaining five districts, the extra miles. This will cost approximately $55,000. So this is unbudgeted money from our professional services line item. And I've also told you how the motor grader operators and the dump truck drivers, those uh, employees are working nine and a half hours, Monday through Thursday, and in, in an eight-hour day on Friday. So we are able, we are working ourselves to do, to get this rock placed, but we're just not able to do all of it with our own forces. Another one of the issues that's uh, common with frost boils is on our seal coat roads. Uh, two years ago, we opted to stop seal coating with county forces and we hired a contractor. This year's contract was already signed with Blacktop Services of Humboldt, Iowa for $166,000. That was signed back in March. Um, then we had spring, many of those frost boils were under the seal coats. They heaved up, traffic drove over those soft spots. They create conditions very similar to what's seen in the photo. Uh, so now we we have repaired those areas, many of them where we we remove that material that's uh, degraded there. We we remove that with our own forces and then we place rock and then we reseal coat over that. We need to do some shuffling of that contract, and we will put a, a double seal coat on a few locations. And those costs will have gone up by approximately $5,000 to that contract is what we're anticipating currently. Waters Road is a, a very specific case. This is uh, west of Hudson between the Hudson City limits and Holmes Road. It's approximately 1,300 feet long and it's in the floodway. Those trees in the background, that's Blackhawk Creek. So it overtops nearly every year it comes out of its banks and goes over waters road water waters road gets flooded for several days at a time we've reseal coated that road 12 times out of the last 16 years i feel like maybe we should be doing something different to save money in the long run let's put a hot mix asphalt down rather than seal coat this again so we would i would like to put hot mix asphalt down on that 1,300 feet. So we would mill out the existing material and then place three inches of asphalt. And we're estimating that would cost approximately $80,000. And that would also come out of the professional services line item. Uh, another special case is Simons Road. 
And this is a road that is directly north of Dunkerton Road, so it's just north of the airport, and it goes to Mount Vernon Road, it goes north to Mount Vernon Road. It has 320 vehicles per day, which is our second, once you omit Grundy Road, it's the next busiest gravel road in the county. If you're familiar with that area of the county, A1 vacation land is on that road approximately a quarter of a mile. That is in the city limits of Cedar Falls. The residents out there, the A1 vacation land employees, the owner, they have been requesting that the city of Cedar Falls pave that portion for a number of years. We've been hearing that. We have a maintenance agreement with the city of Cedar Falls to maintain this portion of Simons Road or this this Simons Road in its entirety. We committed to them two years ago, the city of Cedar Falls, that we would seal coat Simons Road in our 2020 contract. However, you can see by the photos here that I believe this was in March, we had a, a very large frost boil there and had to go and do uh, a repair. We placed seven dump truck loads of rock there and repaired it. However, I w we still are in need of making our commitment to the city of Cedar Falls and I would like to seal code it next year. So to prevent another frost boil, if that were to happen, I would like to put a, a geo grid down and place some rock on top of that. So if a frost boil does come back, we're, we're cushioning that, providing a, a stress relieving layer from perhaps a frost boil in that area. So it wouldn't destroy the seal coat. So I'd I would like to do that repair before we reseal coat it next year. And we're estimating that would cost $20,000 for the rock and the geo grid and then the labor to do that because we would be hiring a contractor to do that work. Any questions so far? Just a few more slides here. Uh, we've had several residents or farmers approach us about improving the drainage and we all know that better drainage on our gravel road system would be a tremendous help that's something we just don't have the gravel roads were never built with any with very limited means of conveying the water off the road getting it away from the road we would like to uh, install a subdrain system a subdrain tile down the middle of the road in two or three test locations. We, I've had a farmer give us a location that has had numerous frost boils over the year. He has even indicated he may be willing to participate with us in a subdrain in, in this location. His area is down in the south, uh, the southeast portion of the county. So if we, this would not be work we can do ourselves, we would have to hire a tile contractor most likely. If we can find someone to do that work and try these two or three test sections, I'd like to do that. And those would probably be six to $8,000 a location, each location. If we can't get it done this year, then we'll probably just put in our local construction budget for FY21 to, to do some of these drainage areas improvements. And in summary, these are the costs that I've talked to you about. We're estimating that we'll overrun approximately $185,000. And it would be primarily to our professional services line item because we just don't have the time to do this extra work. Um, we'll have to hire others. Do you have any questions for myself or, or Wayne's here? He could give you other information as well. well you know, as I indicated in the email earlier, obviously we know we had a rough winter. Uh, we're not the only county. Yep. They're all dealing with the same situation. And we don't know if this is the norm or if it's going to be different each year. So you just deal with what you've got. Um, you're only a month into your new fiscal right. budget, so I'm not concerned. We do two budget amendments a year, usually one in the fall, one in the spring. Um, as an overseer of your budget, I'd like you to uh, not only you come up with the numbers for the board and stuff, but also look within your budget if there's possibilities of moving money from one area to the other. 
on some of the less important areas and trying to balance some of that out. Um, obviously, we'll be addressing this for sure probably at, um, at um, budget amendment, uh, right. if and when that comes. And we do that every year. Um, so you made the board aware of it. I just like to have you look within your own budget and see if you can move some monies around. Um, as far as some of these new programs that weren't talked about during budgets, those will have to come back to the board because we can't approve anything today. This is just a workshop. Um, so some of those new projects, I think you're gonna have to bring back to the board for approval. Uh, either that or yeah, this last one you said you might wait until 20 at yeah. fiscal year 21. Yes. So it, it's uh, it's good information, but you know there's not a whole lot we can do. My fear is you're going to be working for the next two or three months. You're going to go right into the fall again in winter, and you're going to start from scratch. All that rock's going to be pushed off again or swaddled up. So I think we got to use a little common sense in some of the areas. Uh, a lot of these pictures were from March, you said? About half of them, the uh, the uh, Grundy Road ones were just recent, right okay. after we got the rocking done. Because it appears that we're starting to hit a little bit of a dry spell that should help out drastically. Um, so, you know, you just have to deal with what we have to and, yep. and uh, what we get done, we get done and, and you know, you. You could spend $2 million out there, but is that going to fix anything? Probably not. Um, hopefully we won't have to go through another winter like that, but who knows. But again, all the other counties are going through the same thing, or most of them. So I'm just surprised some of those roads still have that boil in them, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the these photos were taken on Le Leversey Road last week, so. But we, we've got how many miles of gravel road? 520. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have areas that need attention, but you just, you're not going to get to all of them, you know, the best we can. We've got the equipment. We've invested in equipment. We've got the manpower. Just have to do what you can, and, and hopefully that's the best, and maybe we'll get lucky and have a soft winter this year, but you never know. And we've had some. Oh, where you oh guys, yeah, definitely. Where you were running an excess budget, so yeah. I'm not too concerned. We'll, um, we're aware of it. The board's aware of what you're doing, and um, hopefully it won't be too much of a sticker shock uh, when we come into uh, any future budget amendments. Kathy, I'd be curious mm -hmm. on some of the proposals that you did make along those. Were there some of those that you looked at as prioritizing or some that you think would be beneficial? Um, to, I say, going into the year. I mean, obviously, I know you and your staff have looked at these and think they all would be beneficial. So if we could do them all now, um, it would, you know, probably improve those areas, at least going into the winter and helping. Um, we don't know what kind of winter we'll have, obviously. Right. So that's, like Tom said, yeah. every year. But um, we certainly know how bad the roads were this one. So do they strengthen or impact some of those decisions you would make on those roads? For example, the the improvements to Simons Road, I really would like to seal coat that next year, because, like I said, I committed to Cedar Falls, to Cedar Falls that we would seal coat it this year. We're very leery to seal coat that portion where the large soft spot was, without um, trying to improve it, trying to make it um, frost boil proof. And so the time to do that would be now. So it's sitting through the winter. And that next year when it comes time to seal coat it, we would then be able to place the seal coat. And the rock hauling, I'm sure, like I say, from a resident's perspective, that's probably where they're looking to see improvements made and watching the roads carefully because some of those are in such need. Yes, I mean, we're having people call Probably every day, still, that w they need rock on their road. Mm -hmm. So See, the thing they don't understand too, Linda, is sometimes the cure isn't rock. Oh no, I we know can that. dump load after load. I mean that 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 doesn't cure it, and I know that's that. all they think is dump some rock on there. No, I mean, I personally haven't had any calls for quite a while. You guys are still getting calls. 
Yes. Yeah, our calls less than yeah. obviously. Yeah, I, I really haven't heard. You know, at one time there it was going nuts, but that's when it was at its peak. But I'm not relying on the residents to tell me how bad they are. No, but I'm, I'm saying their solution staff, is rock. But I'm relying on staff to say the same thing. And, it's um, so bad or not. Right, if we, if we don't hire contract route callers, then we'll only get, some districts will only have 10 miles of mm -hmm. rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we will be behind on... The rock, which where affects we like to be every year, or where we right. like strive to be every year. So they'll go into the year at a deficit, quite honestly, then next year is what happens. And yes. we won't have the ways to make it up because we still have the same staff, the same resources to get Right, it and if, if we don't have that rock, then that that's less uh, insurance for the coming winter, the, the next spring, for those frost boils. But you, you remember, too, when the board first started receiving gas tax money, a good portion of that went to additional rock. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, over two hundred thousand right. dollars. So we've even increased that before this situation even evolved. So, so I, I think that with the four districts contracted, that's still only hitting the fifteen mile mark, not the average twenty mile mark that we strive for each year, right? Correct. And so, um, and so this isn't. I mean, it's, it's all delayed because of this awful winter, but this would be the normal maintenance we'd be doing every year that we're, um, even with the contract, going to fall short of where we'd like to be. Right. If we can get the 15 miles hauled, then that will be the, the past few years, haven't we? The past few years, we've done 20 miles mm -hmm. uh, for operator. Yeah. We're, just, we're just running out of time. We're gonna, the best we can do is 15. That's what's helpful. If if we double that contract rock hauling, would we hit the twenty? Or is that or are there even the folks to contract with in the community? Yeah. There are, but I mean you're looking at a lot of money. So realistically you're trying to keep the cost down and still do what make the right. do actually, which roads really need what we do. Actually that number is something that the board has increased over the years. When I came on here it was half that number. That was expected to be completed mm -hmm. in a year. It wasn't even close to 15. And uh, the board in the last 12 years have increased that through various spending methods, whether it be through local option sales tax or bonding. And because I think your monies that you receive, if I recall back then, was cover about seven miles a, a year or something of reconstruction. And we've really boosted that up to that 15 and 20 mile mark. Uh, we were losing ground all the time back when I first got here. The so. past 25 years that I've been here, we've always tried to get to 20, but we've never accomplished it because of floods. And well, you didn't have funding for it either. I mean, it takes, we had some rather than road use and farm to market, it takes extra money. So I think one of these things that I definitely think we need to see done this year is the experimenting with the drainage, because um, I'd rather know, I mean, so we won't have the final results maybe until by the by March 30th when the budget's due, but it'd be nice to have an example of whether that's a solution going forward uh, sooner than later, so I'd like to see that experiment happen for sure this year. Take um, one of the bad areas and possibly that would be a good yeah, place to try. Probably talking two or three spots yeah. and the thousands of cross points of me. Yeah, right. and it may give you an idea if it'll work in areas that weren't quite as bad. So, but I guess you won't know until you try, so. Have you had some discussion, Kathy, on the Simmons, Ro Simmons or Simons Road uh, with the city of Cedar Falls? Have you had some conversations yeah. with them? I talked to uh, the developmental director few weeks ago and she had told me that the residents in the Timber Ridge area, they're, they're the subdivision that's just to the west of Simons, between Simons Road and 218. Mm -hmm. There's approximately 15 to 20 homes in there. They generate a lot of the traffic. So that those people are calling and um, particularly on behalf of A1 Vacation Land is the way I understand it, saying, uh, you need to get this seal coated so that people can come to this business. Uh, you, it's the only business in the city that doesn't have a paved road. So I did talk with her recently and told her that we, we were planning to seal coat it this year in our fiscal year 2020 contract, but 
just due to this big blow up we felt that wasn't a prudent a good use of our money we would try and get it done next year so I have talked to her recently okay well, look at what type of road or what type of business that road is servicing that probably has something to do with it with travel trailers and fifth wheels and all that that's on I'm assuming that's the road they're using aren't they right it's it's probably how many feet off of Dunkerton is and it big trucks pulling them and stuff like that yeah yeah so you leave Dunkerton Road and go a thousand feet and they're to the west of Simons mm -hmm. I don't recall hearing from them before in the past have we uh, we've heard from that owner many times over the years about mm -hmm improving the road to the business at least to the business and he's been out there about 20 years yeah. i think on grundy road um yes first there's there hasn't been any indication from grundy county that they're backing away from a steel sensor work no, session that we had not that i okay heard because it's i mean we've got to pay back because it's taken up too much of our time um and too many resources every year and so i i wonder is there and i hate to see us have to keep dumping resources into it since we're going to be hopefully rehauling it or we are paving it um and shortly um, i was wondering is there anything we can do to try and limit truck traffic on that i know that i mean target distribution why are you driving on this gravel road you have no reason to do it i hope you're listening <laughs> but um i mean it's just you know it's it just doesn't make sense I Mm-hmm. Oh, all my favorite things. Cost of doing Yes, that that is the majority of the traffic is generated right around that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agricultural traffic. It's twenty four seven. It's three hundred and sixty five days a year. Um, it's traveled yeah. as much as it is it'd be hard to yeah reduce yeah, I think anything be being like that too. Mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. your time limit to do any of these things over is fairly immediate where we the rock hauling we we've time. we've started the rock hauling yeah we have to get yeah. this rock hauled or we're gonna run out of time like Wayne said the uh, we will put together some more information on Simons Road and Waters Road and I guess come back to you with an agenda item for those I thought you're gonna do Simmons Road and FY 21 I would like to do this improvement this year so that we can seal code at next year. but are you gonna have time to do all this improvements with the other well that's what we're saying we have to hire people to do this work we we, we just don't have time we we don't have enough staff and time to get some of these smaller mm, projects done. Yeah, they're running out of time, yeah. obviously. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see an agenda item on all those as well as the drainage. Okay. Yeah, and it, like I said, an updates on all of it probably, I think, too, when you're talking about some of it, I still like the updates on where you're at and how it's moving and not moving, I guess, because of weather sure. and stuff, too. So I appreciate that. So thank you. And, and yeah we could do agenda items though on all of them. sure we just have to be smart you don't have an unlimited budget here and we've got a lot of repair that has to take place so let's just we can I think she has a very good plan right now and I, and I think that we can move on it and uh, you gotta I don't know what it costs from us hiring somebody else to do it compared to what we can do it for no I understand that I'm just saying what would it cost if we did it in-house compared to hiring somebody to do it outsource and our preference obviously would be to do it in-house sure. right so I have told you that our our truck drivers and our motor grader operators they're working nine and a half hours Monday through Thursday and eight hours on Friday obviously we have to buy the rock no matter who's p placing it sure. so the 55,000 is is really just labor and the usage of someone else's truck so we can give you I think we have given you a, an overtime number before I, I just don't remember what it is we could come back to you with that information or email right. it. to be honest with you probably periodic uh, updates is what the board's gonna need 
That way there won't be sticker shell shock when we see it at a amendment time or something. I th well, yeah, updates for sure. On, like, Kathy usually does pretty good updates for yeah, us, I that's think, fine. too. But I think as far as the items. I think the key of the work session today was for her to kind of notify us, which I think we all kind of knew that anyway. Um, I'm not really that concerned a month into the new budget, so. Well, I think it's just preventative measures we're looking at. Goals. I understand that, but I tell you what, three months from now, you're going to start it all back over again. Possibly. Well, should no next spring. Well, I guess we'll find out. I guess I'm thinking or winter. We'll see. But, winter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has anybody else got anything? So, Effie. No. Thank you for your time. Okay, but I'm what? just. I, I'm meaning if there were any of those items that we wanted on the agenda. Yeah. Sure. I mean, like I said, it's you know we want to make sure we get done what we're capable of getting done, and and um, I I would imagine she's going to put a priority on a list of what she thinks should be done and what the board needs to approve and that would be proper to do it that way yeah but it was just a timeline and the cost we're running up against it yeah mm -hmm. so and just kind of see what we want to spend too I mean you know you want to spend a million dollars we can do anything you want well we're only at 185 well, we'll I, that. Well, I know it I know that's it. our annual rock budget so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyway good information Kathy and yeah. um, we'll just stay the course yeah, appreciate board's it, aware of everything so well and i think that was important part of it is like yeah. we weren't all aware of the cost and the projects maybe and all the different things they were proposing so okay thank you thank you is there anything else okay um wrapping up then is there any reports from the board at this time oh i'll just report uh later this week we have our our next meeting of the black Eye county complete count committee for the census um, as I reported previously, due to the fact that there is no uh, funding and seemingly no coordination from the federal government at this point, um, uh, we'll be, I'll be taking up the, the social media efforts, so we'll be unveiling that to you all next week, and I expect that everybody will here will be our biggest Instagram follower and uh, support those efforts. But, we'll share your message. <laughs> yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> Security discussions are continuing. Well, I see the thinking. emails, and uh, have you guys met yet? We're going to meet next week. Very good. Linda? Anything? No. Okay, accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.